cruising around the world, you meet fantastic people with incredible stories. For the past five years, the crew of Bomba Maru have been sailing the Caribbean. They started cruising after leaving the 9 to 5 world and found purpose along the way by using their 45 foot 1968 Prout catamaran as a base to provide relief efforts to islands affected by hurricanes. This is their story and how you, as a cruiser, can help those in need as you hop from island to island. So what kind of a boat is she? It's a proud Ocean Ranger from 1968, so it's 50 years old this year. Whoa, so she's got to be one of the first fiberglass cats Completely, yes. built? Yes. And where was she built? In England. England. England, yeah. You see it also in the in the holes, they're kind of round shaped. Yeah. It's more like two mono holes next to each other mounted. It's like more than a submarine, not like modern catamarans where everything's flat and stuff like standing height <laughs> everywhere. But she's cool Still though. She has a nice wood trim and Yeah, some character. Oh no doubt she's cool. She's how special. <laughs> <laughs> and how does she sail? Like fifty degree upwind and then it's finito and uh, slow down and like forty degree and then nothing anymore but when she get the wind uh, on, a, on a good beam and I have the towels right set then I mean we've been running up here uh, several times with up to nine ten knots she can Can't she can <laughs> process quite good but uh, then always I feel bad because she's 50 years old you don't chase a 50 years old lady down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we're here talking with Andy and Joanna, or is it Joanna? Joanna. Joanna on SV Bomba Maru. What about, tell me about your guys' history. Like, you're originally from, is it Germany? Or? I'm German. I'm half German, half Swiss. <laughs> okay. Before we bought the boat. We decided, like, one year before um, to leave the 9 to 5 because we were pretty, I would say, like, you had a good career. And we realized after going to Africa once again and again uh, for holidays, it's not that what makes us happy. So we decided to leave everything behind, three cars, house and so on, was not making us happy. We wanted to travel and one day we were sitting at the beach in Cape Verde and a sailboat was passing by and we were like, that's the way to travel. Even that I've not been on a boat before, <laughs> there on the beach we decided to shake hands one year and then we want to get a boat. <laughs> And we didn't know exactly what we want, but we know exactly what we don't want. <laughs> and we were like, okay, like for us, it makes kind of sense. Like having a boat, the only fuel you need is, is like wind mm -hmm. and you need to have some skills, but you're responsible on your own, which is not a bad thing because that says actually you are allowed to deal with the issues yourself without whatever and, and it was kind of like okay that, that must be freedom that must be we had actually we had no clue we, we, did, we, did, we didn't even talk to other liveaboard sailors before or whatever we had no idea and that's also when we when we hit the first time on, on Delos it was like really saying thank you because you guys were the only ones that really showed us like you can actually do it you require quite a bit of work when you bought her or was she yes. in, in pretty good shape no she was broken what did you have to do <laughs> <laughs> it was bro almost everything. <laughs> no, it was funny. To start the engine, you had to connect two cables. <laughs> and if the yeah. engine was running and for, I don't know, half an hour, it got warm, you had to wait 20 minutes to yeah. start it over because... It just got hot. Yeah, yeah. It didn't have water maker, no refrigeration, no solar. So we added all that stuff. But like the hulls were intact. Yes. Like it was, yeah. the was basic, floating. Yeah, the yeah. basic the was... The mast and rigging yes. was like yes, pretty that was much that was okay. That's why I went for that boat. I mean, we didn't have that much money. Uh, even after selling everything, it was kind of like mm, disappointing. Can I ask how much a 50-year-old catamaran cost in that condition? Well, he wanted about 70 and we agreed in the end to 45. So 70, yeah, 70,000 US. Yes. And then he, and then you got it for 45,000 US. Euro. We got it. Or Euros? Euros. Euro, hold on, Euros, Euros yes. Yeah. Ah, Euros. Okay. Euros. We Not got so it, much of a difference. We got it for 45,000 Euros and then, yeah, as we said, like we, we got almost a wreck. So we, we had to put in a, another 25 to make her ready to go and actually really live aboard. Cool. Yeah. 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 We circled once around Cuba. I mean, we got uh, to the Bahamas, all the East Coast down first, the Bahamas. From there, we wanted to start uh, across the Atlantic, but 700 miles offshore, the hydraulic broke. Oh yeah, so the steering, huh? The steering. So we ended up without steering in the ocean. <laughs> That's fun. 
I had five people crew on board and I was like, I'm not gonna go to the North Atlantic with these people. So we just uh, turned downwind South. and then we navigated just by, by um, yeah, you know, adjusting the sails yeah. and, and cool. just putting the rudder with some wires or some, some cables. We, we just <laughs> adjusted the rudder a little bit and made sure that downwind that we came back to the Caribbean islands. The, the first time that we got together, you were telling me about how you have a sailboat which is a good platform for moving supplies between islands and you notice that there would be these natural disasters like hurricanes that would happen in the Caribbean and there was stuff but there was nobody able to move it to other people to help and as sailors you figured well we can use our catamaran mm -hmm. in a pretty nice way to help others so what what uh, what do you do and how do you do it it was Honestly, it was not the plan to do anything. We, we've been in Lucaron, which is uh, known as a very, very safe hurricane hole in the Caribbean. And uh, we're fixing our, our hydraulic issues after the, the attempt to cross the Atlantic. And then uh, it took quite a while. We told the boat out and everything. And, and then we, we, we spent the next hurricane season there and Hurricane Matthew hit Hispaniola back in, 19, uh, yeah. in 2016, 16. 16. Uh, which was also a category five hurricane and the center passed just 150 miles of Luperon. And we got a little bit wet and all the sticks were flying around and stuff, but n no real damage, no sure. nothing. But for us, the first experience like, wow, that was tough. Just across the hill in Haiti, there were more than a thousand people died after, after the, the, the the hurricane impact and uh, we had contacts to Ilavash which, which is all the uh, way south in, in Haiti it's a little island there and it got hit the first and also the worst I was like okay how would that be if we just would all just pack our stuff together it's about 350 miles to go from Luperon all the way down to the impact zone and just help out. I mean, the, the, the biggest problem what they have down there is like they don't have access to, to uh, sure. proper potable water anymore because the wells are um, contaminated. contaminated and all that. Because the sewers overflow and then exactly. that gets into the water and then nobody can drink it. And then we were like, okay, let's stand up, let's do something. I, I expected a lot of people would say like, hey, cool, yeah, let's do this. Let's go. Well. Bambamara was the only boat left to put on <laughs> towards Haiti. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But That's we were like, really, okay, then, because the others don't want or whatever, it doesn't stop us. So we made a call back to Switzerland and let them know what happened actually and, and started raising funds and asking shops and what the heck ever, like everybody who could chip in a little bit of something like money or tools or tarps or medical supplies or whatever they could need down there. We were able to load this hull pretty much to level, uh, but half a boat. And with this, we went down to Haiti and, and we're just like, okay, let's see what's going on here, what we can do. And we spent half a year there and realized down there that even if we thought we're just a little boat, we don't make any difference. We did a lot of difference. Even with our power survivor, the little water maker, yeah. it was running 24 seven. We made a pipeline from the boat to the shore to their cisterns and in the morning the people came up with their buckets and everything and try to get their sip of water out of the cistern. Uh, one of the most impressive moments I had down there was just sitting in the cockpit out there and sipping on a bottle of water and then a, 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 a two locals came along in their self-made uh, mango tree ca a canoe and uh, of course there's, uh, they were speaking Haitian Creole so I couldn't understand it. I got an idea because it sounds similar to French but I had no, no idea what they want from me. It turned out that they want to trade two proper lobsters for this little plastic bottle of water. Whoa. I was kind of like, um, seriously? <laughs> you know what, you keep your lobsters, you go back and, and you get every container and, and every bottle you can get and I'm going to top you up with water, of course, we're not talking about trading for water and so on so on so it, we, we just we just changed it was like first of course when we got the boat hey let's sail around the world but then it became less and less important it was kind of like we don't have to be around the world within a certain time so let's do things that are more important right now and then we started that in Haiti when we we're done with Haiti then the next hurricane season came up we had to do, uh, run away we, we, we went to Honduras to get out of the the next hurricanes, 
and then Irma, Maria and all that happened. We just continued what we started in Haiti. So we set up to Florida, picked up another uh, cargo of oh, relief Lord. supplies, and then we sailed down to Puerto Rico. And uh, there we cared for Vieques, which uh, was a little bit left behind. And after the, the work in Vieques, we just went on, and, and now we are stationary in, in uh, Dominica. Dominica. And so uh, the work in Dominica you were doing was specifically about uh, schools, right? Mm -hmm. You can set them back to normal with so minimal effort. So they don't need a lot. They what specifically do they need? Is it like pencils, yeah. books, paper? Simple stuff like this. I, I, most of the people, they just tell me books, 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 because all the libraries, they got destroyed. The roof blew away, water came in, so library like any destroyed. any type of books Any in kind of books, any, any, every, every like pencil, notepads, backpacks, stuff backpack like this, that, that helps a lot. Or if you're a cruising boat heading into Dominica, and you have, let's say, you know, a box full of school supplies. Yeah. What what can one do with it? Is there anybody I mean, you can give it to or um, find you guys? Yeah. And be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna end up with a pile of books on your boat. <laughs> well, said that the, the, what we figure, what we learn in in, in Haiti and also Vieques is that very often one of the problems are the organizations because of organizing. Uh, actually, what we're trying to do at the moment in, in Dominica is like doing, making the whole thing happen without an organization. If you want to donate the, to the projects, we gonna, we, what we try to do is just link it together. So we got to know which schools need projects, which schools actually need help. So if you want to support them, I will give you the bank account, the, 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 the straight bank account from the school. So you can chip in the money there and um, can let them know like, okay, this is from Sailing for a Smile or this is for your paint job or for the playground or whatever, because then you don't pay any organization. It goes yeah, straight, it goes straight there where the it's needed. Need it if there's, we're gonna be stationary in Dominica. If somebody wants to know how to help or whatever, we're gonna be there on the ground and we're gonna be available online also for answering questions or coordinating stuff like making projects happen that okay let's say like in March there's, uh, there's planet that we build yeah. a playground yeah on the 2nd of March is mm. through the SSEA also uh, play uh, playground art um, project for the St. John school in Portsmouth for example that's the first one they're doing and then we move on from school to school and hope to do one project a month or if funds are coming in faster, <laughs> twice a month <laughs> True, yeah. to work on the ground. So if people want to get in contact or want to know what's what's up to date, they can contact us on, on Facebook or like search okay. for Sailing for well, Smile. Well, I think what we'll do is maybe in the description of this video, we'll put some links mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. down below and hopefully Perfect. we'll be able to get some help together and oh, send awesome. it cool. to the people who need it the most yeah. without having too much of it filtered off to no, not exactly what we want to avoid because <laughs> yeah, organizational <laughs> overhead and exactly, stuff. Exactly, yeah. that's what we wanted to get rid of. We don't uh, take anything, so that's why it goes directly to the school accounts. I mean, we, we're fine with what we're doing, so we don't need anything. So it should go directly to the people in need. Well, keep up the good work, guys. It's yeah. awesome. It's good to see other sailors helping out. And I think just we'll so do what we can to help support. You know, it's, nice. it's, it's pretty easy for f to do a little thing for everybody. And if I come together, how much everybody could be, yeah. that would make a lot of difference. I mean, you know, when when you when you hit those situations where you realize this little, for me, it's nothing, and for somebody else, it's a game changer. It could make a huge difference. Yeah. And that that keeps us going in in this direction. And forget a little bit about where we actually want to go or what hell, because it's more important. It's like Hello Dallas Tribe and thanks so much for watching the video. I think we've figured out a pretty cool way to help out the guys on Bomba Maru with the uh, schools in Dominica. If you head on over to svdellas.com forward slash beer and you make a donation no matter how small, in the comment or the description field there's a little place where you can send a message to the crew just make sure to put in there sailing for a smile and if you do that what we pledge to do is we're going to match your contributions so for every dollar that you send to us with sailing for a smile in it we're going to match that dollar up to one thousand dollars so i think together we can hopefully make a pretty big difference to the school and the kids and uh, we're going to make sure that all of that money 
gets to where it should be with no overhead or like administrative fees or anything. So thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video and have an amazing day. See ya.